Okay, and we are recording. Thank you. Okay, so um, what we're looking at, one of the things that we're going to use is this new vision system, which I have contributed to um, in the sense of contributing content to this, uh, the development of the system. And it is a holographic scaling system. And what we're gonna look at is how we, how holographic scaling actually works. Um, so Novision is a health software for decision support via remote treatment or face-to-face. -face. Now, I think it's more than health software um, because the system, one of the unique qualities of the system is it doesn't just do one-on-one -on -one, uh, sessions. It does, it can do groups too, which is what we're gonna use it for here as well. But when we uh, talk about it as a health software for decision via remote treatment, it really does um, offer, uh, work, it can work in the sense of real estate because it can scan property, it can scan animals. We have like a veterinary work set. It can scan, uh, there's a specific horse work set actually. Uh, New Vision can also uh, scan like groups so that you can do corporate coaching. It also can scan groups for say sports teams and all. So it's much, much more expansive. We can look at the health of a property, which Laura and I actually did in the past. Um, so so this, it offers deep integral decision support as an online software as service subscription. The users of the software are health practitioners generally who want to identify essential information quickly with the goal to give their clients more effective treatments or product advices. Now our customer base of health practitioners include naturopaths, homeopaths, acupuncturists, massage therapists, reflexologists, et cetera, psychotherapists. And the work that I did was mostly to contribute uh, emotional healing, and that's what we're gonna use it for. The core of the software service is a generic matching engine without the health content provided by Scalin. Um, so Scalin is our, is our guys in the Netherlands, Kevin and Gerwin, and they developed the software and the, they run the whole system on their servers in the Netherlands. The underlying technology is a form of pattern projection analysis and is specifically called holographic scaling. So it reads a person's hologram, which is the quantum fields around them. Um, health content in various domains is added to this advanced matching engine by New Vision, that's us. So we like to say that Kevin in the Netherlands is Bill Gates and he's the mastermind or the Steve Jobs, the mastermind behind creating the system and we're just Best Buy. <laughs> we're just a distributor. Um, Don't forget your words there, not just. Yeah. <laughs> Pull the just out of that statement. <laughs> um, by New Vision and further supplemented by New Vision Partners. So what we, the health content providers, <clears throat> I provided content for the work sets. You'll see the work sets in a few minutes. Um, the health content can be easily added in a simple intuitive test set format, usually using a spreadsheet. Um, so we're the main distributor and my colleague and friend, Gwen Foster, is the managing director of New Vision and she is a naturopathic doctor and doctor of natural medicine. She treats more than 80% of her clients remotely. Before becoming a health practitioner and starting New Vision, she had successful insurance agencies. So she knows a whole lot about that too. Okay, what is holographic scaling? What can, you, what can it do for you? It's a new advanced matching technology for comprehensive analysis and remote treatment of persons and animals or like I said, property, you could use it to scan your farm too. These subjects can be matched against huge amounts of assessment and solution categories. Examples of assessment categories are problems, causes, symptoms, behaviors, constitutional states, and risk. Examples of solution categories are actions, mitigations, and preventions, and improvement measures. So in comparison to configurable matching learning and other AI techniques, because there's lots of quantum systems out there, what are the unique benefits of our system? It requires a minimal amount of data to describe the subject, meaning birth date, person's name, city of birth. And the access to an ability to match data in the conscious and unconscious mind of individuals besides observable data. So say, for example, you have acne, um, that's the observable data. Hmm, what's the cause of the acne? We can go in and find out. But then there's also the conscious, the unconscious. Very conscious if you have acne and you're looking yourself in the mirror. And then unconscious in that we can find out the emotional causes of things or the emo things in the emotional field around the person so that we may be able to help mitigate anything that's like 
forming itself into matter from the field that is unwanted. Ability to reconnect a subject with information for beneficial purposes. This is similar to visualization by top athletes and other high performers to achieve intended peak performance. In holographic scaling, the visualization is uh, executed automatically, our system does that, independently on behalf of the subject client as beneficiary and using a scheduled mirroring principle um, as described in the next slide, which is what we call reconnect. Persons or animals or properties can be analyzed and treated remotely besides face-to-face -face, and the quality of remote treatment is independent of the size of the distances between the practitioner, the software system, and the cloud and the treated subject. So I can talk to someone, I've done sessions for people in Australia and you know, it doesn't matter that we're far away. So um, a hologram is a pattern that is whole and, and complete unto itself. And at the same time, it is part of an even greater pattern that is whole and complete unto itself, while at the same time is part of an even greater pattern again and again in the same way. So here we have, you know, there's the hologram of, you know, me, and then there's the holographic field around me, and then there's the, you know, the larger field of the collective. So we're, we're looking at um, the, the comparisons of those things. Um, as you change the part, so you change the whole. The miraculous beauty of the hologram is that any place in the pattern of a hologram, so anything in my field, where you make one little change, that change is mirrored throughout the rest of the hologram. So that means if we are shifting something in the, the field, then we are shifting something in the person's being. We often see it metabolize or manifest in the person's life. If you've ever been treated by a reflexology therapist, and we're going to use reflexology as an example, you'll probably have experienced this property by applying certain beneficial pressure techniques to say your big toe or the top of your thumb or your earlobe or point midway between your eyebrows. The reflexologist can trigger relaxation, say, for example, your entire head. However, the hologram of your head is not limited to your body perceived in the visible world. A photo of your head is also part of the hologram. And the term head links to a minimal amount of data that uniquely defines you as a person is also part of that hologram. Now, both of this is written information on a piece of paper or stored in a computer. Um, so essentially, that's information in the field. So I can clear Laura from my house just by putting her name on a piece of paper and doing some clearing techniques. I can, um, Laura could in turn, take her Sharpie and write some information on her abdomen, for example, so the world doesn't see it, and it can affect her field, um, which is a very neat thing to do. Um, the essence of our remote treatment software is that we first match which remedies in the form of information test items potentially have the greatest beneficial influence on relaxation of the head, as in this example, then the information that refers to the person's head is combined with the description of the remedy as part of the new unified hologram. Um, so mirroring this potentially beneficial change throughout the unified hologram by a, a scheduled procedure, which we can do in our system. The combined information of the person's head and the remedy is scheduled in a mirroring procedure called reconnect for a certain period of time with certain intervals. Running the mirroring procedure according to the schedule can trigger potential beneficial influences leading to relaxation of the head. When something is holographic, it's whole exists within every fragment of itself. So holographic scaling, for example, if we're looking at your head, hands, and feet in the, in the reflexology sense, your hand contains reflex points all over it for these main body parts. The one for your head is located on your thumb. The ones for your hands are located on your index and pinky finger and the ones for your feet are ones in between. Then there's your ear, which also contains acupuncture points for these main body parts. Points for the head are at the bottom of the ear. Points for the hands are at the top of the ear towards the back of the head. And points for the feet are at the top of the ear towards the front of the head. So that's your ear. Then there's iridology, which we've all heard of. The point for your head can be found at the top of your iris towards the nose and the lower part of the iris away from the nose contains points representing the hands. Points for the feet can be found at the bottom of the iris. A two-dimensional database or information structure exists. It's called the holographic space. So here's the holographic space. 
and here's the everyday experiences like a person in their field. Everything in the holographic space is projected into the three-dimensional space plus time. We call this our everyday experience. So what is happening in your field first has to happen in your field before it happens in your life. So sometimes you go, oh, I knew that was going to happen because it was in the field. And there are things that stay in our field year after year, time after time. And that's one of the things we're going to do in these sessions with people is we're going to help them understand what's in their field by the scan and be able to alter what's in the field. Like, for example, the other day we were out and um, once again, I had, I, I'm calling it the Tarantula Chronicles because I keep you keep seeing tarantulas and I said this is interesting and they keep coming at these opportune times at these Pluto transits and so the the other day when this happened um one of the girls I was with says ah my grandmother is arachnophobic and that's why these spiders keep showing up around her <laughs> because she says my grandmother attracts them <laughs> so the spiders are in her field so that's one of the things that we can we can sort of a tough two. So, okay. A single point in the holographic space is projected into multiple points of our everyday experience. The inner symmetry is often called a fractal, which is one of these in mathematics. The nautilus shell is a fractal. But in this case, it is more than a fractal, it is a hologram. If you work on a reflex point or acupuncture point for the head, the head will be affected and the rest will again be reflected back in each of these points. So here's like the holographic space with the head. Shifted. And then there's the different points in the reflexology scans of, you know, where the head is. Um, in the past, allergies were tested by letting patients drink a glass of milk. The obvious, they obviously had the side effect that if the patient had an allergic reaction to milk, there was no other substance which could be tested for that person that day. In order to reduce the allergic reaction and thus shorten the time until other substances could be tested, kinesiologists switched to the application of one drop of milk with a pipette on the tongue. However, they discovered that they could detect an allergic reaction through muscle testing when the patient was holding a carton of milk to their body. So kinesiology is muscle testing and it's based on the principle of your body doesn't lie. And applied kinesiology is when you take something such as a cup of coffee and you put it up to your body and you muscle test and the arm either goes up or down or you can touch with your finger. And that gives us a sense of whether a person is allergic. Now I have coffee with milk. Does that mean I'm allergic to the coffee or am I allergic to the milk? Well, one or the other, you can ask your body. And depending on the level at which your body, your you know, arm goes up or down, if your arm stays stable, you have no problem with the substance in the cup. Um, if it goes down, then we talk about allergies. Later, it turned out that the amount of milk is not really a factor in this muscle testing, and kinesiologists switched to using a test tube with milk, which was placed on the body. Soon, boxes filled with test tubes for kinesiologists flooded the market. And the, their surprise was great when they muscle tested, and it still worked with the test tube, just contained a note with the word milk in it. So if you couldn't get milk that day, we're out of milk, or the milk went bad, we can't use this milk, and there's no time before the patient, we're gonna just write milk on a piece of paper, stick it in the test tube, and that worked too. So many of the test tubes were sometimes very scarce and therefore expensive substances were then replaced by notes. Um, so you can just take a piece of paper, write milk or coffee or whatever on it, and do the same test. We can't test the whole person. We can't put a person into a bottle or a test tube, but we can put some saliva into a test tube. We can also put a note with information about the person into the test tube, or we can even remove the test tube altogether and only use a note with information which uniquely defines the person. But these are modern times, so now we use an electronic note, which is what we're creating, when we put the data of a person's birth date and birth city and their name into the system, the details of the person and electronic note, cell milk or whatever other allergy we're testing. The physical universe is widely seen to be composed of matter and energy in a three-dimensional space plus time. Um, yet a growing group of scientists regard the physical world as made of information with matter and energy as incidentals of a two-dimensional database or information structure painted on the cosmological horizon. 
So again, scientists are starting to look at this from a different perspective instead of just strictly science. And here we are again. And when something's holographic, the whole exists within every five minutes. So, Thank you so for defending the scientists. <laughs> <laughs> Robert Bernberg, my teacher, needs right. to hear this. <laughs> well, maybe you should send him a copy of our thing. <laughs> kind of in there, but I'm going to wait until the end of his six-week course. <laughs> This is the visible world, and this is the holographic space. Um, your body can be perceived in the physical world, as we know. The information defining your body exists in the holographic space. Your visible body is only a holographic projection. Each of the following are part of the same hologram. Your body perceived in the visible world. Information which uniquely defines your body on a piece of paper, meaning if I write your name and birthday and city of birth on that. Information which uniquely defines your body stored on a digital device or a test tube containing your saliva. A carton of milk can also be perceived in the visible world. The information defining the milk exists in the holographic space. The physical carton of milk is also a holographic projection. So everything that exists in the field also exists as matter, you know, or it becomes matter in the projection in the physical world. So each of the following is part of the same hologram, the carton of milk received in the visible world, you can see that, a drop of milk in the visible world, an information which describes this milk on a piece of paper, and information which describes this milk stored on a digital device. When we want to know how a certain person responds to milk, we are actually interested in the holographic relation between this person and the milk. So what's the holographic relationship? Um, be based on the electronically stored note, the person and their information, we create a holographic token of the individual. This token refers to the person's information in the holographic space here. The token is also part of this person's hologram. The token is constructed as a point cloud, is what you're seeing here, to enable advanced matching. Similarly, we create a holographic token of the milk. Now we are able to match the holographic tokens of many assessment categories against the token of the subject. If we sort the results of matching between the person token with each of the assessment tokens, we get a list of information about what is relevant for the person, sorted from the most relevant to the least. The following substances, so this is what our system brings up, the following substances match in decreasing order. So this matches with the person, this person's field. First, it's milk, which looks like it's an acute allergy. Then there's cat dander, which is also an acute allergy. Mold is also acute, it's been red. And the brown ones are gluten and corn, which are more chronic allergies that develop over time um, and really sort of ingrain themselves. Then there's MSG, which is, you know, monotonic glutamate. That's less of an allergy for this person and dust mites. And then we go down the list and it's less and less of a concern. Um, then, besides matching the subject against assessment categories, we also can match the person against solution categories, such as adjust your diet, don't eat dairy. Um, or we can match the person against constitution states of body parts like intestines. The system creates holographic tokens for these kinds of test items as well. Now we can also match these holographic tokens. If we sort the results of matches between the person token with each of the test item tokens, we get a list of items which have the potential to change the hologram of the person sorted from the most potential impact to the least. The states preceded by squares can indicate suppression or subconscious state. So it comes up in circles or comes up in squares. So, you know, the square here is subconscious. You don't realize it's your intestines or your lung colon meridian. So maybe you're, a, a, you know, maybe the lung colon meridian is affected by eating, you know, or drinking milk or something or eating dairy, but you're not aware of that. So it's subconscious or suppressed. Um, now we can select the items that we want to put in the reconnect for this subject for beneficial purposes. In this example, only the suppressed item intestines is selected as balancing information for the person. So we're really just like sort of balancing what is subconscious. To achieve this, the point cloud of the person is combined with the point cloud of the select test item intestines into a new unified point cloud. The combined information of the person and intestines is scheduled in the reconnect for a certain period of time with certain intervals. 
running the reconnect according to the schedule can trigger potentially beneficial influences. So we're, what we're doing is we're reconnecting to their field, the, the intestines. Um, so that's a subject or that's the item we want to reconnect to their field so that hopefully their intestines get a sense of like new information from the field. And the person gets new information by, by projecting in, intestines into their field. So as you change the part, so you change the whole. As you change the branch, so you change the tree. Sure, if you're pruning your tree in your garden, you're changing the whole tree just by clipping a few things here and there. As in the following sketch of a tree, when each branch is kind of a reduced size copy of the whole. So, so we have an animated tree example. As the mouse or cursor is moved around, so the angle at which the branches form is changed. So if we move the angle, so if we move the cursor around, it's showing that the branches form based on that. So, and that's basically what we're doing. You know, we might be pruning something in your field and then the whole system is going to shift. One of the things that we do, sometimes we clear a few things and they're really pertinent things in a person's field. And then it clears a whole bunch of other stuff. When we go back and look at the scan weeks later, there's all sorts of other stuff that's gone that we didn't realize was really that deeply connected to the items that we cleared. Sort of so things domino like shift. effect, right? Yeah, yeah, domino effect, exactly. So any questions so far? Mm, nope. Jean, any it's questions? It's really interesting. Yes. Thank you. So I would talk about so this about five times and still don't know if I would totally understand it, but it's, I'm looking forward to see exactly how it's, how it's done. Okay, so, so is there anything that's a little confusing that like still is confusing to you? Um, can you go back to like when you said like about the tokens? So when you do the hologram, let's go ahead and show you this. Let's see. Um, Laura is our subject <laughs> and here we are. We create a token, Laura's token is, is, it's like a digital note st stored in a file cabinet. So here's Laura and she's born November 4th, 19. Can you see this? Yes. I have a green sure. thing. You can see this? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, November 4th, 1965 is Laura's token, Reno, Nevada, Laura Flanagan, okay? So there's probably only one Laura Flanagan that's born on November 4th, 1965 in Reno, Nevada. And she's, that's unique to her. And when Laura is, um, yeah, there we go. Um, when Laura is being scanned, when, when the, we're scanning Laura's field, we're, the token is all that information that's there that's guiding us through to um, sort of express her field. So I can, I can take Laura and just run the entire system and I can see what's in just in her field without putting in this box a filter to describe what I want to look at. Okay, so I'm sorry? So how do you do the scan? The scan is done, the system, so the scan is done through choosing any or all of these work sets. And because the server is in the Netherlands, they are, they are like, that's what empowers the system. So basically, they've built a computer. They, Kevin built a computer in the Netherlands that can run this for everybody who's on it. So if I'm working on it and Gwen is in Houston working on it, and if, you know, somebody else is in, Niagara Falls working on it, and somebody else is in Japan, we're, get, we're all out of Kevin's system in the Netherlands. Now, this is the entire, entire system that I just ran, all the work sets for Laura. When, so it's taking, it's matching what I have in my work sets, those tokens, which like, because they're in the system, because we have affirmations and allergies and stuff, it's matching what I have versus Laura's token and what's resonating between Laura and the system. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. I have a question. So, <laughs> yes. So did you just scan all of the work sets in my field right now? Is this, this is this real is what the work sets, this is okay. why you don't necessarily do this for a client, 
but this is like what you can do. We just scanned the entire system and this is what's coming up. Now all these purples are, um, you know, a, a place, these are all things that are somehow coming up in Laura's field. These are all in her I field. have diarrhea, apparently, and epithelial ulcers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. See, you know, this is another thing. Gwen doesn't like it when we show our screen. If we're doing something medical or physical, she didn't like yeah, it. Yeah, this is <laughs> obvious. And Paula knows this about me. I'm extremely transparent. So um, right. none, of this, none of this is, um, is terrible. For and the, these are, the purples are all, remind us, Deb, they're all transient. Obviously, I don't have chronic diarrhea. It no. is interesting. This is probably TMI. It is interesting to note that, yes, indeed, this morning I did, I had um, a restless night um, yes. just <laughs> my tummy, my tummy going around and around and around. Now, I don't necessarily have diarrhea, but I cleared some things this morning twice, which I don't usually do. So that's, again, too much information, but it shows you how accurate this is. You can see me smiling. I'm like, oh, that is. Epithelial ulcers, and you know, some of it you're not always going to relate with, but um, right. And it doesn't make, go, make yep. any sense. It doesn't make any sense sometimes. Um, you know, there's there's stuff here that like okay, and then there's these things, neuroplasticity. Hmm, I wonder who that comes from. <laughs> um, and then we have all. Look at all this. This is all this. This is all chronic, but this is like stuff oh, back up there. Where's where's that lump? I just saw something about a lump. Lump. Oh, lump in the ovaries. Interesting. Okay. Um, but see, this is what oh, this place place came not, up too. What? So where's the soap which, opera in your life? <laughs> which also, what did you say? Say it again. What came up? Oh. Place came up. We put in movies and music and, and all sorts of stuff in the system because it can come up so here's a funny example when john and i were first working with this my john is my late partner if paula doesn't know we were first working with people with the original system we had before this and john was talking to a client and the client is saying you know what you know my wife i want an open marriage and my wife doesn't and He's like going on about how he wanted an open marriage and his wife doesn't, his wife was British, she wanted an open marriage. He was American, he's like, yeah, I want an open marriage. And the movie that came up with him, for him, was The Apartment with Jack Oh, oh I remember that one, yeah. <laughs> you remember The Apartment? Oh, um, yeah. So this is like, this is an apartment where all these men are going to arrange together to have affairs. So it's like right. The Apartment came up and it's like, oh my God. You know, because it was in his field, because that's who was describing it. So somewhere, Laura's got a Peyton Place coming of age story. So. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever you say Peyton Place, stop like, sharing the screen. I'm kidding. Don't yeah, <laughs> this is fascinating to me, and I, I will say that this yeah. is the third. This is the third webinar now, and I can say because Deb is using me as a demo. Thank you, Deb. I mean, this is really <laughs> powerful stuff, right? I have felt like, um, well, and one of them came up, well, one of them came up in the first and then also it's come up in the second scan and I'll be interested to see if it's come up here as sharpness. And Deb was like, sharpness, what is yeah. it? And she feels like she's being stabbed or knifed. Or, and I was like, oh no, my immediate thought was, I feel focused, I feel sharp in the mind um, these last few days. and. Uh, there's also the astrological reasons, which Deb can explain, but uh, it was it was fascinating to see that come up. So yeah, so yeah, so what she's been doing for me is like yeah, keep going. Can we do more webinars, Deb? I think we need to, <laughs> I think we need to offer this a little more often. <laughs> and I get so to here's so here's Laura's beliefs about the success of the Socrates Center, which is now this is a scan from December, okay, and if I run that same scan now analyze that work set when i choose psychology and emotion and i run the scan we're going to compare ta-da with this um or are you doing great uh, <laughs> yeah right like, a lot of this stuff disappeared um yes. you know since jean was on the first webinar she saw all yeah that. yeah a bunch of these things have disappeared like you know um like the hell realm, it's gone, yay. <laughs> oh, yeah, hell, yeah, we get that's on the other skin. Look, there's, there's this. Um, 
limiting belief. My life is devoted to pleasing others. I don't matter. <laughs> ah, so, you know, I'm sure her horse might agree with that. <laughs> but this is interesting. That is an actually, that is actually a very fascinating one to focus on. And it's in the consciousness. It's a circle, right? So um, the squares are subconscious. And yeah. The circles are conscious. Yeah, that, one's, that one is a circle. And it's a chronic. And then when we did, like, so we did clearings on Laura last, you know, last December. And then I would take things like a push pin and, you know, we want to be creative together, build a mutual project. We don't want limiting belief. My life is devoted to pleasing others. We want things like feeling state of friendly. So we like, we want joy. So we go to that push pin, that purple one. And I reconnect that to Laura's field. And this is what we will do for people in the class. And we will schedule the connect right now. And that's going to be what's being broadcast or reconnected to that information to Laura's field. So the more we broadcast joy, like if I do a minute of joy every day for Laura, she should be like shifting into this place of joy. Um, when you really honestly feel that you've done this now, this is the third time. I <laughs> bring more joy. It's really so, great. So now we're looking at like what happened before. There's things that disappeared. That one of the things that disappeared was the limiting belief because we cleared that last December. And so here we are. We've we've cleared it and it's not showing up in her skin. So that's and then we can do we can find that hell one again. Um <laughs> that was actually pretty funny. Um let me find it. So what I think that was what needs to be identified and cleared. This is it. What needs to be identified and cleared for Laura to be successful with the Socrates Center. And one of the things that came up was fear of hell. So um, we keep laughing about this because Laura, between December when we did this and now Laura has been through her own personal hell, moving like even since I've met you, you've moved twice. Right. And the last That's move was hell. You know, yeah. so she. She confronted her fear of hell, <laughs> even though we cleared it. She confronted her fear of hell. Now, if we run this work set, this, this filter, what needs to be identified and cleared, again, if I go here and I go to my psychology and emotions and I ask for the analysis of this, she's not got fear of hell anymore. And then there's that feeling state of sharp, which is still there. But Laura likes that feeling state of sharp because for her, that means she's on the ball and connected and focused. So yeah, so this is, and when we, you know, we can reconnect and when we clear, we're gonna clear something like, we wanna clear love, hate relationship, right? So we wanna take that with the yellow push pin, put that in there. And what I do when I clear is I imprint or reconnect. So we were reconnecting those nice things like joy to Laura's, directly to Laura's field. The things we want to clear, we have an imprinting tray and I use a vial of water and I put it with her name on it and I stick it on my imprinting tray and I reconnect to my imprinting tray to the bottle, the vial of water and I do a clearing, a remote clearing for Laura based on what the information is in my uh, in her field is here and then I take my different implements my different tools and I clear Laura's field and I can do that informationally Laura is in Perez Zeladon I'm in Mescazoo she's like a two and a half three hour drive away I all I need is you know she might want to be present when I'm clearing it and she can take her magnet and clear at the same time that I am and I can take a skeleton what I usually do is take a skeleton chart and I put Laura's name on a piece of paper and her birthday and all of this token information underneath my skeleton chart. And I'm clearing it as if she's right in the room. So Laura in the field is, is the same as Laura's projection in person. So that holographic space, I'm tapping into Laura's holographic space as I'm clearing her. And she is feeling it in her everyday experience. Now, some of these brown ones are harder to clear. As you can see, things such as love-hate relationship is still here from last December. So that's something like you don't want to have a love-hate relationship with anything, especially your work. So, and we're asking about success with her work. So we want to, you know, it's like, oh, I love doing this, but I hate what I have to go through to get there. So this is really something where we stay on top of it. And this is why we're offering support to people after 
the class is over because we want people to sort of, you know, know that where they stand. We have a plan on going at the beginning, scanning everyone, and then at the end, scanning everyone and see what's shifted. Sometimes things like, and with all the work you do on yourself, like you don't have to clear it through the system. Laura could sit here and say, okay, I know I need to work on my love-hate relationship with what I'm doing. So I've got to just focus on the love. When I'm distracted by negative thoughts, especially right now with Mercury squaring Saturn, um, you want to just say, no, I'm going to. Change, <laughs> and I might just, prescribe a mantra for myself. Um, exactly, that's specific to that, like you know, exactly that, because mantra is my um, my go to in terms of meditation. It okay. is my um, most powerful form of meditation. Although mm -hmm. I am pretty promiscuous <laughs> on that on that end, I do as as Deb knows, and uh, we are always sharing each other with each other the meditations that we're doing. Um, and in fact, incidentally, I did one this morning that I, I do probably once every couple of months. It's not one that you necessarily want to do um, every month and it's angel codes. And I did that this morning. So it's fascinating. Um, you know, I did it just because it was sort of first thing on my mind as, okay, I'm going to change up my meditation this morning and I'm going to do this Archangel Haniel meditation, which is guided. And so not thinking about what the results might be, not remembering that Deb's going to scan me right now. So it's fascinating to see um, between the work that she's done for me and uh, some of these powerful meditations, how things are clearing, how, how the scan is, is, is different. You know, okay, so here's a little trick. What, did, what was your mantra? Uh, Aham Prema. Oh, good. Very good. Uh, it's Aham. Very good one. Um, that means I am divine love. So here's what I can do. I can... Schedule the reconnect for one minute once, uh, oh, let's say in the morning, right? Every day for the next three weeks. And I'm going to hit schedule. Now, Aham Prema is being reconnected to her field along with joy and all sorts of other stuff. Okay. So there you go. So now Laura will get a dose of Aham Prema every day in her field um, and for the next three weeks. And so one of the things about that it, that's interesting is that w one of the things that Kevin and Gerwin have told us many times is you don't need to be putting a reconnect in someone's field 24 seven. You don't want to, re we used to like reconnect things for 90,000 minutes and, and it was just constant for three months. And it's like, you know, he's, they said, no, no, no. That's like your field. That's like being nagged. That's like you're constantly being poked. And you don't want that um, because it's, then you're going to reject it. Then you're going to be like, and then, so the thing is, they said this is stronger than any homeopath remedy. A minute is just plenty for small things like that. You know, if we had a list of 30 items, maybe I'd put it on for two minutes. I'd see how long it takes you to go through it. Um, so, you know, I can do that. Aham prema. So I can do that. Where's my reconnect? I can do this right now and I can reconnect it and you can see, watch what it does. It starts, it bounces these in and out. And so like, if it takes me three minutes to get through all this once, then I'll say, okay, maybe three minutes. But that's probably not even correct. It's probably just one minute, you know. So any questions? Not for me. Okay. No. Uh -uh. Laura, why don't you tell really, me? It's really, <laughs> it's really yeah. different. It's interesting. Yeah, it is different. It's the future. <laughs> future. Yeah. You know, and I know um, Paula. Paula's. Uh, you know, always. I'm always impressed with Paula. She just grabs as much knowledge as she can. Um, so you can probably attest to how difficult it's been for me to describe this. I try while I'm teaching body rolling yoga, you know, my free fitness classes, I try to explain this, but it's, it's in a, in couple. Hmm. How do you say that word? It, it really, it really takes this demonstration, right? It is. Um, yeah. And, you know, despite the amount of time that Deb and I have spent together, 
um, the presentation is so well done and she does such an amazing job at really distilling down complex content. Really, this is not, not something easy to wrap your mind around, um, but it has, you know, just to hopefully empathize with both of you and anyone who first sees the system, um, it is not easy. So questions may not arise right now and that's why we're offering this webinar several times. And in between, if you can't make the webinars, that's fine. It's not as if, you know, part of the reason we offered for is, again, schedule availability for um, folks. Um, but if questions arise in between, most certainly reach out and um, we can hopefully clarify. Can I ask how the workshop will work? Yes, I was just going to, I was just going to launch into that. Um, so one of the things that, you know, folks will get as, um, as they register are, is the agenda. So you're probably wondering, well, what's going to happen throughout the course of the six weeks, right? So it's right. loaded with work from Deb, of course, and there will be, um, some of the work will happen pre-workshop or, or pre-course, I should say. There will be pre-course um, uh, work to be done. And that involves, of course, you providing the information that's necessary to generate the astrology chart for yourself and the new vision. So what we're going to do is once we have registrants, then you'll get an informational email that hopefully won't overwhelm you. But since you've been through the webinar, this piece of it, we don't have to go through all of that exhaustive explanation. Um, but you will get uh, a detailed information and instructions about the course and how it will work, what the agenda is. Um, and again, that'll happen uh, prior to the course so that you can um, submit that to Deb and then she can generate the astrology chart, run the new vision system um, on you. And then the first week we'll be discussing the astrology charts and how they will be employed throughout the six weeks. The second week we'll, we will look at the new vision system, the results from the new vision system. Um, that said, there will be, I will be launching right into pranayama and meditation on a group standard level based on what, uh, what comes through, uh, what we see coming through for, with the intentions. So the, the, the most important thing for folks to think about before signing up for this course is what is your intention? What do you want to get out of this course? So maybe you're looking to strengthen a relationship that you have currently that, you know, that may be on the rocks. Maybe you're looking for abundance, more abundance in your life. Maybe you're looking for a new career track. Um, maybe, um, what are some other examples, Deb? I don't know. Um, uh, what's next in my life? What's my purpose? <laughs> what do I need to do now? Um, this is, these are now that we I have the new normal coming, what is that going to mean for me? And how does that work? See, and it's interesting, Deb and I have had these discussions. We don't think any of this is an accident. Like we've been working on this for, since November, we've been working on this course. And it has been a, a lot of work. We meet weekly um, to define how this is going to work. And we think it's going to be really, really powerful. We had no idea coronavirus was gonna come in. So there are probably a lot of folks that are going to be in a position where they don't, they're forced or not, they're not going to be showing up in the world the way that they used to be. And so what we hope to do is assist them in navigating through new paths. So, and again, it's really fortuitous that in some senses, you know, the timing, although it's not fortuitous, we don't, we don't like to see what's happening with this pandemic, uh, but most certainly there are a lot of folks I think that can benefit from this. And um, that's where I think the combination of our skills are uniquely um, staged up to help folks in this in this um, in this area so um, so what you will get again if when you register is all of the information and a week-by-week -week agenda of what will be uh, what we will be laying out now there's some dynamic nature that naturally occurs with these kind of courses and Paula can probably attest to this just from teaching YBR right um, and having taught yoga for as many decades as I have and yama the body rolling I know that I have one plan in my mind, even just for the physical nature of those practices. And sometimes the journey takes me elsewhere. So that uh, we need to keep in mind that we need to be somewhat adaptable and fluid with this. Um, but that is why, that's exactly why it's six weeks in length, because things are going to change. And that is exactly why we have a system to measure um, the new vision system to, as a metric to see what's happening in people's fields. Uh, and again, I want to reemphasize the fact that this is a unique system. This biofeedback system is unique to any other because it can also scan groups. And that's one of the things that we intend to do. Of course, 
um, with consent from the group is scan the group as a whole. What is happening in our fields as a whole? Because we will be connecting sort of intimately in this small group setting. Um, so our consciousness will shift together. And so we hope to run those things along parallel lines, both the independent um, and the collective. Um, and you don't have to think about the collective yourself. That will just take care of itself. The field already knows, right? But the important thing for folks um, to keep in mind is the most important thing is to have an intention. That is absolutely number one. If you come in and you say, I don't know, I'm just, you know, you'll get something out of it. People might not know what their intention is and just come in and say, I want new vision to figure out what my intention is. <laughs> Nonetheless, we will have to put a question into the system for you. So you have to generate some words in order for the system to come back with some information. Um, you know, and so make it as powerful as you as 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 you can be. So really, we want people to think on this, think hard on this, because it's a six week journey. What do you want the end picture to look like? So start with the end. Start with the end picture in mind. Envision yourself as that new person. So Deb, I can continue on my journey through doing this. Yes, this is this will just help your journey. You know, anything that you and I do is is you know helpful and this is if you want to do that absolutely like this is something you know we could identify whatever the obstacles have been right um and clear them and get a handle on them and go oh okay like we are only perceiving consciously like what what are we using five percent of our brain and we're only like getting we know things about ourselves well like i don't know what i want or i don't know what my I don't know, like, and, and, and we ask ourselves time in and time out, but when you do this scan, you're like, oh, so this is what's going on. Oh, okay, well, that might be, and like in my case, I know plenty of times I'll be like, what is the problem with me? Why does this keep happening? Or why is this, like, taking so long? And then I have to go in and scan, like, I ask questions like, what are my beliefs? What are my subconscious beliefs? What do I believe about this situation? And then it comes up with all this stuff and I go, oh, <laughs> really, I believe that. <laughs> and then it's like, yeah, I kind of do. I didn't want to admit that, but I, I kind of do. And isn't it and true, Deb? I mean, I don't know. You have obviously, obviously a lot of experience in this and have run many students and including yourself uh, or, or many clients, I should say. Isn't it true that um, for every scan you've done for me, when I look at the conscious uh, parameters that are coming up in the system, versus the subconscious, the conscious, it's always like, oh yeah, wow. It's almost yeah. scary, like, how does it know? <laughs> like, yeah, how does it know that? And like, how does it know that? Oh. That's actually something funny that happens. Um, people say, like, like I you know, different friends and colleagues in this, and they'll say, oh, I scanned my sister-in-law, and she said, how does it know that? <laughs> <laughs> how does it know that? Um, here's a funny story, so back in, Oh, right before I moved here. So in the autumn, uh, the spring of 2016, I had a client come to me. She was an astrology client. We were talking about her business, et cetera, et cetera. It was a, quite a unique business. It was a really smart business. Um, and it was in the beauty industry. It was really smart. And then she wrote to me at, in, like months later, like October of 2016, and she said, the walls are closing in. I've got, you know, mortgage to pay. I've got kids. I got, I don't know what to do. My business is just not, nobody's ordering my product, et cetera, et cetera. I like, hmm, why do you, what's the problem? I wrote to her, what's the problem? Give me a statement. Tell me what the statement is. And this is the thing that I encourage people to do and we'll probably do with us. I want a statement about what you want to change in your life. And so she wrote me this paragraph. It's money, 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 money. It's like if I had more money, blah, 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 blah. I said, bottom line is never money. It's something emotional behind the money. Money is a, only a manifest story. So I scanned her statement and I said, this is about support. I wrote her back. I said, this is about support. This is, this is like people, have, your clients have to support you. Your family has to support you. Everybody's got to get on board and be supportive. And so when I scanned and then I reconnected to her field, I re and she wrote me some statement that she wanted reconnected to her field about money. And I said, all right, I'm going to change this. And I typed in, I said, this is what I want you to read to yourself every day. This is what I'm broadcasting to you. Okay. I'm reconnecting this to your field, this story about, you know, support in your life. 
if you can't, if your clients can't support you, I mean, they got to do something, then they're not going to, you're not going to have a business. So what happened? That was a Thursday afternoon. Monday morning, she writes to me and she says, what did you do? <laughs> because all these customers in, you know, England and around the country, I need to place an order with you. I need to place a huge order with you for the product, blah, blah, blah. All of a sudden, boom, all of this started to come into her life because she shifted, we shifted her just in a few days out of the money to support. And you know, you're not conscious, you're thinking consciously. It's got to be matter to matter. It's dollars to, you know, I need dollars. Yeah, but what's behind the dollars? I want support or I want freedom or I want this. Or I want the world to know what I do. I want to help people, whatever. Boom. Once we did that, once we got to the, the, the core reason for it, then everything shifted for her. And then she was like, what did you do? Oh my God. You know, because she says, I'm amazed. I, I can't believe it because then people started ordering from her. So we took one paragraph and I like that. I like that people define in a paragraph what they want to change about their life and define on how they want their life to look. What do you want your life to look like? Give me a few paragraphs on that. Yeah. Those are probably, um, you know, if you have that coming in, you're, you're, you're going to have obviously greater success with the system. However, I think that not everybody will have that, nor do they need to have that. It's not a requirement. As yeah. Deb mentioned, you can just say, I don't know. I don't know what's in my field. I just feel like my life is chaotic and I don't know why. That's absolutely fine because, you know, that is a starting point. So we would put that question into New Vision. Why is so-and-so's life feeling so chaotic? What are my beliefs about my life feeling so chaotic? And boom, it'll come up. And so then we can start defining intentions throughout the six weeks and, you know, and start employing uh, specific practices to achieve outcomes toward those intentions. And what could happen is the person says, you know, the first week, I don't know what I want. I have no idea. And then by doing a scan and, and talking astrology, and they say, oh, now, I'm doing it. now I know what I want. I've discovered what I want. If you can go into the class saying, I don't know what I want, and coming out saying, I know what I want, well, then that's that success in and of itself. Yes. <laughs> you know, and um, getting back to the, the questions that Deb is showing you that I used when I first met her, when she first came, well, not when I first met her, but like throughout, really. Um, and that is the question about, you know, we're talking about the success of, Soc of Socrates Center, the success of my business here in Costa Rica. Um, and at that time, when we first did the scan and New Vision, it was at a time where I was very distraught as to where the center should be. The physical location in Costa Rica. I was, you know, frantically searching for properties um, not wanting to rush into anything. Uh, if you know anything about real estate down here, the real estate agents really try to railroad you into things. They're, they're like used car salesmen. Uh, and so trying to avoid making the incorrect decisions was, was highly important. So I was in a, quite a state of anxiety when we ran these questions. Um, and then it was the second time that the second time that we that I experienced new vision was after I saw the property that I now have purchased, and I was still a little conflicted. Although I, you know, ninety nine percent of my consciousness said this is where it is. There was like a one percent of that was floating around in the subconscious that was more or less aligned with potential business partnerships that I had seven hours north of where. I currently am with the property that I, that I just did purchase. So it, you know, it revolved around what, um, you know, what are my thoughts regarding these relationships that I'm establishing that could potentially help with the business where I'm currently living and how are those obstacles are, are they obstacles in preventing me from, um, having the center be located in, uh, the appropriate environment for not just my just not just my clients but my horses myself there's a lot that played into that decision and i can say that <laughs> very gratefully the system called up information that i did use to make my decision huge this is not you know this was as as you can imagine i mean I, my whole entire uh, life investment go is in this and so it was very yeah pertinent for me, very powerful, which is why, of course, I'm thinking everybody needs this, you know, on some level, 
you know, maybe you don't have anything as critical like your whole entire <laughs> career and life um, life savings is <laughs> invested in what you know what you're, you're going forward with in, into this course um, but having it be so powerful for me is the reason that uh, the reason I thought we need to do something we need to team up put our skill sets together and launch I think this is a great idea thank you <laughs> thank you Laura like Laura knows what prescriptive meditations and pra, uh, pranayama breathing and all that people can do for themselves, you know, to solve certain things in their life. So if the system comes up with certain things, like the person feels they're in chaos and they're spinning, Laura knows how to ground the person and help them like process. Self regulation tools. And there are many, right. many um, pranayama, some, some of the yoga, uh, some very specific meditation practices that might be mantra, they might be vipassana, they might be uh, any number of them. Um, we'll look at all of them because not everyone aligns with every meditation method out there. So very fortunately, I have, um, have had many, many teachers in the meditation realm. I have not been um, committed to one particular guru uh, for better and worse, but I, hopefully that's for the better in, from the perspective of allowing to offer sort of a menu for people to, um, to select from. Paula knows this because she took my eight week meditation course in Madison. And so that's, that's the way that course was structured as well is each week um, there was a different practice offered different, um, different means of meditation, um, but also always aimed at a particular uh, focus for that, that week, like gratitude or forgiveness. Um, without going into too much detail there. But also, um, I want to point out that one of the things that we're also currently working on is when the world does open back up, is that we will be working on retreats together. I, um, I hope, <laughs> I hope to have a long-term partnership with Deb so that she will be present with the New Vision System at the retreats that we offer in Costa Rica. Whether, whether those retreats are for, um, for helping people out of addictions or... Uh, couples counseling, couples, couples sort of therapy, or um, autism for children. You know, parents who have autistic children want to come down and understand how to manage that. And the horse is also a big part of this. Interestingly yeah. enough, the the system um, was developed initially for horses, right? Performance horses, as right. I understand, in performance horses in Europe, or in Europe. Yeah. So it's fascinating to me that that's where um, that. That's where the system got its origins to help, uh, mm -hmm. help improve horse performance. You know, horses are, are already sort of, in my mind, enlightened beings. Don't, you didn't hear that, Socrates. He gets a little arrogant. Ah. <laughs> Literally, he can hear me from where I am. Like, he's right out my window. Um, but they are very, they're vibrating at a, a very high level. And they have a means of communicating that is not through language. Uh, and it's extremely powerful. So they will be employed most certainly at the center. So when people think about equine therapy, they think, oh, I, I can't do that. I don't, I don't like horses. Or, I'm scared of horses. Um, it's, it's my intent to show people a different side of the horse that maybe they're not familiar with. So, and along those lines, I also have the, I'm a heart math facilitator. I'm not sure if you're familiar with um, that tool. It's another biofeedback tool that allows one to determine whether they are in coherence. So it's, um, it's a Bluetooth device that's clipped to the earlobe and through pranayama methods, we can actually detect with the app on the phone whether or not a person is in coherence or they're not. And that's going to be critically important for me as an equine therapist um, to, for safety reasons. So I won't, the, the idea is to make certain that when folks are working with the horses that they are in coherence and I have a way of measuring that. So we'll be measuring um, their coherence level. And if they're not coherent, there are practices that we can get them into coherence with, the pranayama, the yoga. Uh, and then they will come into, say, the round pen and be able to work with the horses. It's not just safety around horses, but it's also protection for the horses because they're very compassionate beings and they can experience what we call compassion fatigue. So, of course, I'm selfish and I want to make sure that my horses remain healthy to help heal humans. So that's a lot. So that's sort of the long-term vision. Now these courses, you know, are an aside, but they can also be integrated in with this um, as we start. We could, put the, the in, we could put the horses in the system and do a clearing on them too. If they if they have fatigue, we can put them in the 
and yeah. wonderful. I mean, is Deb not like, I mean, can you see? It's like, it's not an accident that we've connected. And again, I'm so grateful to Yamina. I don't think, I don't know if she knows, we should send her this webinar. <laughs> mm -hmm. All this um, gratitude, she, but she's feeling it in the field. We're sending it out to her. Yeah, yeah. Any other questions? Um, Jean, do you feel like you gained more knowledge from this? Did you feel I, like you're I'm, I'm a little bit calmer. I, I was so overwhelmed the first time. Sure, sure, sure. Um, yeah, sure. Yeah. I'm still overwhelmed, but it's... <laughs> <laughs> um, if I can put it that way. So uh, yeah. actually, I'm looking forward to it. I'm definitely going to do this, and I am looking forward to it. Excellent. That's great. Wonderful. It'll be yeah. fun. It'll be really actually, fun. along those lines, now that I'm thinking about it, I had a poll thinking, not knowing how many people were going to sign up and not wanting to say, hey, you know, uh, what dates work for you? Um, it's like two of you on the call, but I will launch this poll if it's okay for you. This is what we are looking at in terms of dates. Notice that we have not defined the dates um, yet. Although we are looking to start on May 12th. Uh, let me launch this poll to see. And uh, Jean, you might have already, you might have already answered this question, but um, so you can answer it again. It's okay. <laughs> we can, we're, we're skewing the data a little bit, but <laughs> <laughs> by having her answer twice. <laughs> Paula's looking like, oh no, neither of those work for me. <laughs> I'm thinking, I, I'm you also thinking, thinking neither, one of them, neither one of them is really optimal, but okay. it wouldn't really matter. I mean, if it would be Tuesdays or Saturdays, Maybe really. Neither, neither of those are optimal. Um, what we'll probably do is, I mean, these are the dates, these are days that work between Deb and I. As you can imagine, it's difficult with, um, with both of our schedules to find, find dates that align for us and they're going to for six weeks so this is why we've chosen these as our preferred um oh. might but don't so don't um, let that if it doesn't work for you go ahead jean i'm like saying saturday is not good and i'm like this i'm not going anywhere it's not like <laughs> say okay you can go out now you know yeah, yeah, yeah. saturday's well, like i'm in new york saturday. so i'm pretty well confined to my apartment so mm -hmm. Yeah, this is, these are difficult times, I know, I realize. But we may, um, we may see some different responses. And so um, we will, obviously, Deb and I are, have several meetings lined up. And so we're going to talk about whether or not. So don't get too hard locked into, like, these are I'm not hard locked into anything, whichever Great. one. Great. Whichever one allows. Awesome, thanks, And Jean. we also mentioned Monday evening at, like, the same time. That's, as the, no. that's, a, that's a possibility as well. Um, well, this we'll is put, another poll out probably separate from the, the zoom call mm -hmm. um one of the benefits is that venus is going to go retrograde while we are doing the class and venus will be retrograde for six weeks and so i think that that's a really like venus retrograde is the goddess going within and it's it's more like really like looking in at ourselves and especially like we've gotten mostly women that respond to this and you know, there's there's that sense of the female needing to go in and sort of connect with her female energy and awareness and her own female feminine power. You know, actually, as I'm looking at this, um, Saturday would probably be better because I'm doing the astrology class at seven o'clock on Tuesday. All right, so Tuesday, and this starts at. Six and then it goes to seven so thirty. And then so I got like a half hour in between to. Uh, uh, right. Okay. If I can ask the two of you to take the poll again, so I just I just it deleted those results and um, relaunched it. I can pick Saturday this time. Okay, Saturday, and then there's also Monday, Monday evening. Right. Potentially Monday, Monday the eleventh. We were talking about. So everybody likes Saturday. Everybody likes Saturday. I like Saturday. I personally like Saturday. I know Monday was a problem for you, Laura. You said you had a switch. Monday was, depending on the time now, if we, we, you know, it's kind of a sticky. Oh, right. 
you know, I've got the Ayurveda class in earlier on Monday. Mm -hmm. Right. It would end up having to be earlier, which for a New Yorker is not so bad, but I don't know about um, with Paula or people that are in the central time zone. Um, a Monday class would be offered at um, the earliest I could do would be 4 p.m. my time, which would be 3 p.m. Paula, your time, and 5 p.m. Jean's time. Fine. That's a definite possibility. Um, should have had it in the poll. Sorry about that. But, you know, what we'll do is we'll look at these poll results, but then we will launch um, another one separate from the um, from this webinar. Okay. Thank Perfect. you. Perfect. Awesome. Thank you, ladies. Thank All you right. so much for Thank coming. Thank you. Thank you, Jay. Thanks, well, you too. You. All right. Yep. Let us know if you have any questions. And we'll, you. we'll see you soon. I will. Okay then. Okay. All right. Bye. Bye. Bye.